And then what we have here is the retina. And again, it's a layer of cells, but notice that it has all these types of cells. Now, there are many types of cells, but the ones I definitely want you to focus on are what we're going to cover real soon. So things, things called cones and rods. Okay, so what are cones and rods? Well, cones and rods, as you can see here, they are special types of neurons. These are photoreceptors that cells that detect light. And cones detect colored light in three different colors. We'll get to those real soon. And rods, these are the ones that detect pretty much the difference between light and dark. So they just detect light in general, but they do detect within a certain wavelength. So this tells you, rods tell you whether something's really dark or whether something's very bright. Whereas the cones, there are three different light wavelengths of light it detects. So there are display. If you're into technology, you're, you have red, green, and blue cones that detect in certain way, or they specialize in detecting certain waves of light. There is some overlap as you can see here, but notice that the peak of light absorption for the blue cones is at the blue wavelength and then green for the green cones and red cones over here. But blue cone is unlikely to detect things all the way at this spectrum. But again, this is a little uh, physics and a little more general science than where you did those mixing of colors in elementary school, you're mixing pigments. But when you mix light, it's different. So when you, mi you have mixed red and blue, you get magenta. So kind of purplish, kind of pinkish. But when you remember, there's no yellow light or yellow cone in your eye. You have the green cones that detect green light. So what happens when you mix red and green? Well, if you again, it's not the same as pigments. So if you mix green and blue, you get this kind of like bluish green called cyan. But if you mix red and green, you don't get brown. You get yellow. Interesting, huh? And what happens if you mix red, green, and blue light? Well, again, if you've ever played with paints and pigments, you know that you get this weird dark brown color. But in light, you actually get white light. So if you have red, green, and blue, our brains interpret it as white light. So there's no such thing as pure white light. It's a mixture of red, green, and blue light. So yeah, so then if you were used to, like, if you do a lot of computer graphics, this is why you see this color wheel, this is a computer graphics color wheel. And again, this is the rainbow for RGB color. So again, mixing colors of light is not the same as mixing colors as paint of paint. But why is this important? Well, if you're colorblind or partially colorblind, or actually the correct term is color deficient, but if you have a lack or deficiency of the cones, you might not be able to detect these lights, or you might have weaker detection of some of these wavelengths. So if you have something called red-green color blindness, there's actually two types of it, but this is the most common type. So we have protonopia, which is what we're seeing. So people who have protonopia, they actually have a defect with the red color. And so if this looks the same to you, so this is what people with normal three color vision look at with, with intact functioning red-green cones look at. If you see the same thing as this, that means you might have protonopia. But notice that if you have normal vision, that all the parts on the red part of the spectrum, they're kind of like this muddyish kind of brownish color that blends within the yellow and greenish. Now, deuteranopia, this is something wrong with the green. And what we notice is it's kind of similar, right? Now, but now, like the green colors, they now look browner and kind of wash between the red and yellow wavelengths of color. Now, tritonopia, this is interesting because this is pretty rare, and this is due to a uh, lack of, or actually a lack of blue cones. And what we see here, well, now this, uh, you have blue kind of washed out here. You see red, but now this green is kind of this weird blue color instead. Now, color deficiency. So the thing is that this full-on lack of cones is kind of rare, and you might be hear, heard of like color deficient division. So when you ever have something like protonopia, deuteranopia, tritonopia, that's the absence of color altogether. But if you have a color deficiency, and actually I'd have color deficiency, I found out when I was in elementary school. So when you have a color deficiency, it's called anomaly. So instead of protonopia, you have protonomaly. And notice that compared to the protonopia, it's a, now you can start to see a little more resolution. Deuteranomaly, and you can see a little more color vision, and tritonomaly, 
this is the one I have. And actually, I can't tell the difference between the, or I can, it, maybe it's a different little shape, but these look almost similar to me. And it, I think I took one of those, each, if you've taken those tests where they had like the numbers and with those little colored circles, well, I mean, I could see the numbers, but it took me longer. And the reason why it took me longer is because supposedly I had trouble distinguishing really close shades apart from each other. But Deuter Anomaly, so if you know someone who has color blind, or this is the most common type of color deficiency. So they probably have Deuter Anomaly or Deuteranopia, or like my friend who has red green color blindness. It's kind of scary for him, but good thing he's a good driver. Uh, because he actually can't tell the difference between the red light and the green light. So he just goes by context and also the location of the lights, and he just knows where all the lights are. Like, oh, that's kind of scary. But yeah, so Deuter Anomaly, the most common type of, of color deficiency. And then Protonopia, slightly more common than Deuter Anopia. These are the ones that lack it, but yeah, the one I have, it's kind of rare. I was really surprised, and I've only met one other person in my life with it. It's kind of funny because, like, it it doesn't really bother me, but once in a while, I, I I'm like, I'm like, oh shoot, that is a different color. Yeah. So if you, any of my PowerPoint presentations look kind of like off color, that's because of, I blame my church of anomaly. <laughs> All right. So again, I, there are also cool apps online where you can actually see how it looks like if you have a with different color vision or color deficiencies or yeah, yeah, color blindness.